Hey there, this is Jacob from RoboFlow, here today with another tutorial on how to train YOLO models, particularly this is the YOLO X model, on your own custom data set. We're going to be doing object detection to recognize objects in your images for the objects of your choosing. So we're going to go ahead and dive into this Colab notebook here, link below, and we're going to train on your own data set. So before we dive into this notebook, I want to talk a little bit about YOLO X. So YOLO X is a new leading detector in object detection for the different family of YOLO networks. What these networks are seeking to do is to make a very fast inference with fast inference speed and still maintain high accuracy by sort of shrinking the mo model smaller and smaller and keeping accuracy higher and higher. And of course you can get higher accuracy by, by raising the model and uh, by, by increasing the model size. And that's why you see these upward sloping lines here on, on this uh, evaluation. So, here on the x-axis, we have the, the speed of infer inference, and on, on the left axis, we have the accuracy of inference. And you can see here that we have yellow x here in the upper left-hand corner, which is the best corner to be in. So yellow x is now on the cutting edge of the best uh, uh, yellow networks. And there's a lot of exciting things in this paper. I will blate them for, for the purpose of the, uh, of the length of this video, but you should definitely dive into this paper. We'll, we'll also leave the link below on all of the exciting new research uh, that has been put into the yellow x network but for today the important thing is that we're going to learn how to adapt this network to your own data set for your own use case so today we're going to be adapting the yellow x network to learn how to recognize blood cells uh, that is red blood cells white blood cells and platelets in microscopic imagery and this is the same thing you can do with your data set with your own images so we'll be using this public bccd data set today, linked below, and you can go ahead and download this exact same data set the way I am by going up here and hitting download in the upper right hand corner and choosing the Pascal Bach export format. And I'll show you in the notebook where that comes in here in a minute. Now, if you do not have, uh, uh, you don't want to use a public data set, you want to use your own images, you can go ahead and label your own images in RoboFlow. So when you upload your, your images to RoboFlow, you'll see them in the annotation editor when you click on, a, uh, on an image to annotate, and you can draw bounding boxes, bounding boxes of interest around the objects that you want to detect. And you'll be able to draw these bounding boxes for different objects of interest. So in this data set, for example, we're trying to tell the difference between who's wearing a helmet and who's not. So we've labeled just simply heads and helmets. And this, the, this network will be able to learn after enough annotations and images have been provided to it, how to identify these things. So now let's go ahead and dive into the BCC data set. So like I said, click download and then you'll click the Pascal Bach format and go ahead and head into this notebook. So uh, now you're in this notebook um, and the first thing we do is we, we uh, pip install or, or we, we clone the fork of the YOLO X repo that we've made on RoboFlow to smooth out some of this custom training procedures for you. And you pip install the requirements including the right version of Torch uh, for the Google Colab notebook that you're in. Now, if you're not familiar with Google Colab, this is a server that Google provides for you running a Jupyter notebook underneath, uh, which is this Python environment that we're in. And it already has a lot of things pre-installed, but we'll want to downgrade Torch down to 1.7.1 to match the CUDA version that is also running. Now, if uh, Colab shifts the CUDA version, there may be some errors here and you may need to do a little bit of hacking on getting the right PyTorch version, but hey, that's where all the fun is, right? So we go ahead and first make those first installs then we'll install the NVIDIA Apex. This is a, a, an NVIDIA uh, a library for helping with mixed precision training and uh, speeding up some of our, our training process that we'll be running. After that, uh, you can go ahead and make a few more installs. This is the Cocoa API. This is used for uh, downloading object det detection data. Um, the next step here is to download your data set from RoboFlow. So here, this is where your link will come in with your data set and you'll simply import your data set here and, uh, and uh, move along. Oh, the other thing we do here is we uh, download the uh, checkpoint for yellow X. So we're gonna be training yellow X underscore S today, which is the smallest version of yellow X. The reason we put this in the tutorial is it's the fastest to train and the fastest to infer. So it's kind of the fastest way to start getting used to this network, but you can always scale up to other networks by grabbing uh, the other release files that are, are available at this, at this location. So we went ahead and downloaded our data set and now I'll go ahead and jump in live and start coding. So here uh, we'll go ahead and uh, 
in, uh, write a file that so we can write files uh, from Jupyter Notebook. And then here you want to put in your class names, lowercase, and stripped of whitespace. Uh, the reason why this is is that the uh, data set scripts will be reading through uh, from these lists to, to know what classes uh, that your network should be learning from. So like I said, we have red blood cell, white blood cell, and platelets, and we've lowercased and stripped all of those. Next thing, we'll uh, run this helper script that we put together here at RoboFlow to parse your data set into the exact Pascal lock format that uh, this network is, is looking for. We already exported in Pascal lock, but we needed to uh, tune a few things, and you can always go in, oh, go in here into this voxtext.py and see exactly what we're doing there. Now, the next step is replace this with the number of classes you have. So put in the number of classes. We, in this case, have three classes, so we're gonna go ahead and hit that. Now, we're ready to run training. So in order to run training, we run the train.py script, and we point it at the uh, experiment that we are running here, which is the thing that we are editing above uh, with some of these uh, with some of these lines, like this this line for the num classes. So you can find this experiment Python file if you go here into yellow X, and then you go into exps, and you go into examples yellow X voc, and then you can look at this file here if you want to see everything that's being that's being set. Now, this can be useful if you want to, for example, change some of the parameters of the network, the num classes. Um, also, there's some things in here like the max labels. If you have more than 50, you might want need to change that. Um, and overall, this is kind of the general data set uh, definition for how you're setting up your network that you're going to train here in the next step. So now let's go ahead and do that. So we go into tools, we use the tools.train, and we point that at the file of where our data set lives. Uh, now there's a few other things here. We're saying like the batch size and, and, and a few other uh, things where we want to train at floating point 16, yada, yada. And this is the, this is the path to that uh, starting checkpoint that we, we want to start from. Now, after you start training, you can start from your own uh, different checkpoints here uh, of, of where the model is at while you're training. So I'll go ahead and take this off now. So once we start training, uh, you'll see your network build and you can see some of these um, hyperparameters that are being set. Um, and of course, you can, you can dive into the code base and look into uh, tuning some of these if you're, if you're really uh, getting interested in working on a little deeper with Yellow X. Um, and then you'll see your model definition uh, print out here, which is uh, what the Yellow X team has so, done so wonderfully uh, to, to put together. Now, training will be running. And as training is running here, you'll see um, essentially, you'll see the epochs uh, coming out. So 300 was a hyperparameter that we set in, the, in this file here. Um, it'll train for 300 epochs. And then you'll see, um, basically you'll wanna be watching uh, to see this total loss number converging. So you wanna see total loss going down as time goes by. That, that, that's gonna be the best sign. And now after every epoch, uh, I have it running for you. So. Uh, this will uh, print out your average precisions for each class. So you can kind of see here that it's learning red blood cell really quickly, but it's taking a little longer to learn the other classes. And then there's this mean AP, which is mean average precision, which is a very popular network and object detection to see how well your network is doing. So you want to watch these numbers going up and pick the model at the checkpoint that hits the most maximum of the score because uh, you, you can pick, pick mean AP uh, to be the best. I'll also drop a link to uh, mean average precision below if you really want to nerd out on, on your um, model evaluation uh, metrics. So here we can see as training, we've already reached uh, 0.6 mean AP, um, and that will just keep going up as, as time goes by. Here, here we can see we're already at 0.8. Uh, so things are really moving along quickly here. And that's again, something I was talking about with uh, some of the exciting advancements in, in Yellow X. So, uh, one of the exciting advancements was they had a, a decoupled head. Uh, so they train uh, this network now with, uh, with rather than just one sort of feature pipeline for both class and, and uh, object uh, location regression, uh, they have a separate head and separate features for each of these things. So they found that this decoupled head allowed them to actually uh, train and, and, and fit faster in terms of the number epochs to, to the uh, AP that they're getting on Coco, and, and we're really we're seeing this live right now on on custom data for for um, for this uh, toy data set that we have for the blood cell detection. And so, I encourage you to train this all the way through for at least 300 epochs. Um, but you can be watching things, and if you see your map uh, your map at 50 uh, starting to level off, 
uh, then you might want to uh, kind of cease training. So for the purpose of moving on with this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and stop things here. Um, but of course, the network's going to get better for the longer, longer we train it. So now your model has been saved into this uh, yellow X outputs with the experiment name that you had. So yellow X Voc, uh, underscore S and then the latest checkpoint. But you can go ahead and look in this folder and see other checkpoints if you're interested. And we'll do a one last evaluation here, which is basically the same thing that was hap happening after each epoch on our, on our test data set. So here we'll see what, what, um, what uh, we get for our, our eval. Oh, okay, well, we, this, this didn't quite work, but we'll go ahead and debug. Okay, so we're back. So we did some uh, debugging on the fly here to fix our evaluation script. The reason it was breaking is that the test set is actually is actually smaller than 64, which is what the batch size that we had uh, coded in here. So if you have a small test test set, you might need to bump down this uh, uh, dash b for the batch size uh, in in your in your test set. But now we'll just go ahead and run uh, evaluation, um, and this will give us the same evaluation that we had uh, above here. But you can uh, do it here on on your final model. So you could use this less epoch model checkpoint or you could use the best uh, checkpoint here in the yellow X outputs, your experiment, and then uh, where all the models files are. And um, the next thing here is that we wanna run test inference on an example image. So this is actual real inference that is happening uh, in a way that you can uh, now uh, have, you know, uh, inference on, on uh, live on raw images that the model has never seen. So I'll go ahead and point this here to an example image, uh, and you can do so above by checking your dataset export. Um, and uh, picking an image uh, from up there and, and point it to the test image path. Uh, and then you'll get inference on a test image. And then you can go ahead and display that inference here. And uh, here we can see it's starting to infer. So keep in mind, we did only train this for a few epochs. So we didn't train uh, this network for too long, but it's already learning the difference between red blood cells and white blood cells and platelets. Um, so this is uh, kind of really exciting work uh, when you train this on your own data set, you're going to see even better results, especially if you run it for me more epochs. And uh, the lastly, the last thing I want to show you in this notebook that you can do is you can just go and uh, go over here to the file system in Colab and you can hit right click download. And so you can take this uh, best checkpoint file uh, down from the notebook and you can start running this uh, inference locally in your application via an API or something. Um, uh, with uh, all the work that you have done here. And uh, so this is really exciting. You have learned today how to train Yellow X on your own data set to recognize your own custom objects. And as always, we enjoy uh, supporting your work and, and, and uh, creating these custom de detectors and custom computer vision models via RoboFlow. And if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like and subscribe below. And of course, we'll see you in the next video for the next cutting edge research. And uh, until then, uh, happy training, and more importantly, happy inferences.